Assalamu alaikum everyone this is Dr Manu Bangash welcome to my youtube channel hope you guys are doing well and the topic of this video is osmosis so let's get started so before discussing osmosis it's important to know what is a semi permeable membrane a semi permeable membrane or a selectively permeable membrane is a type of cell membrane which allows only certain type of particles or selective particles to pass through it under certain conditions this let's say is the cell membrane and we all know that we have tiny spaces small spaces in the cell membrane that allow the movement of different type of particles across the membrane and we have two different sized particles on one side of the membrane okay these small sized particles can easily pass through the tiny spaces that are present in the cell membrane whereas these larger sized particles cannot pass through the membrane so this shows that this is a semi permeable membrane or a selectively permeable membrane because it is allowing only certain type of particles to pass through it whereas we also have completely permeable membranes uh, such as the membrane the cell wall of plants that is a completely permeable membrane whereas um, urea urea is almost a completely permeable particle which will easily pass through the membrane osmosis is defined as the net flow of water molecules across a semi permeable membrane from solution with low solute concentration to solution with high solute concentration or it is the movement of water molecules from high osmotic potential to low osmotic potential Okay, this diagram shows a semi permeable membrane on one side we have pure water and on the other side we have salt solution which is salt dissolved in water so on this side we have salt plus water and here we have only water under normal conditions what happens that the amount of water that is diffusing on both sides of the membrane is usually balanced or equal amount of water is moving in and out of the cell so the net movement of water is zero but when a concentration difference of water develops as shown in this diagram on this side of the membrane we have more water concentration and on this side we have less water concentration and this concentration difference of water on both sides of the membrane causes net movement of water from high water concentration area towards the low water concentration area and or solution and this net movement of water through this semi permeable membrane from high concentration towards low concentration is called osmosis we all know about the different units like kilograms or grams that are used to describe the number of particles in a solution and in case of osmosis we have unit a specific unit which is called osmol so it's a unit which is used to express the concentration of solution in terms of number of particles so in osmosis instead of using gram or kilogram number of particles we'll rather use osmol so osmol is One gram molecular weight of the osmotically active solute, 
osmotically active solute is that solute which is retained which cannot pass through the semi permeable membrane and that so retained solute is the osmotically active solute because it causes the osmosis of water across the cell membrane so one osmol is equals to one gram of the solute okay so we know that one osmol is equals to one gram of solute dissolved in a solution right now let's say we have one gram of glucose now when glucose dissolved in water right now glucose will not dissociate into ions it will remain in the form of this c6h12o6 like so as a result one gram of glucose is equals to one or small of glucose but in case of ions let's say sodium chloride sodium chloride when dissolved in water will dissociate into two ions sodium and chloride right so now this is one and this is one and when added together we get two ions so one gram of sodium chloride dissolved in water gives us two ions and that two ions will be equal to one gram two or small of sodium chloride so this shows that although one or small is equals to one gram of solute but when you're calculating this osmol of the solute you have to consider whether the solvent when dissolved will dissociate into ions or not if yes then you have to consider each ion individually osmolality is one osmol of solute dissolved per kilogram of solvent and osmolarity is one osmol of solute dissolved per liter of the solvent and osmolarity is a colligative property which means that it depends on number of solute particles and not the type of chemical species that is present for example it will depend on the number of sodium and chloride ions that are present rather than whether we have sodium chloride or hydrogen ions and we can see this in the formula which is used to calculate the osmolarity so the formula used to calculate osmolarity is osmolarity is equals to g into c whereas g is the total number of solute particles that are present in solution and the unit used is osmol per mole whereas c is the concentration of solute which is mole per liter okay, so for example c which is the concentration of solute solute here is nacl and its concentration is 3 mole whereas we have to find osmolarity so osmolarity is g into c so c is given which is 3 mole whereas g is not given here in the question but we can guess g from this see in nacl we have two ions one sodium and one chloride so the total number of particles that are present in sol a solution will be one and two so g is two c is given three into two is six so total osmolarity is six osmol per liter 
On the basis of osmolarity, we have three types of solutions hyperosmotic with high osmolarity, which means that greater number of particles, solute particles are dissolved per liter of solvent. Hypoosmotic low osmolarity means less number of solute particles dissolved per liter. And isoosmotic means same osmolarity or two different solutions with same number of solute particles dissolved per liter. The diagram here shows the movement of fluid whenever cells are placed in isotonic, hyper and the hypotonic solutions just to show the importance of osmosis. Okay, this diagram shows red blood cells placed in isotonic solution. Since it is isotonic, we have same concentration of solute outside and into the cell. So, equal amount of water will be moving into and out of the cell, maintaining the normal volume of the cell. This diagram shows red blood cells placed in hypertonic solution. This solution is hypertonic means it has more... Um, solute concentration as compared to uh, that inside the cells so as a result of that water will move from the cells into the uh, the solution outside because it is hypertonic and that will result in shrinkage of the cells as shown here and this diagram shows red blood cells placed in a hypotonic solution. Hypotonic means less solute concentration as compared to the cells. As a result, the fluid will move from outside into the cells resulting in swelling or enlargement of the cells. So this was all about osmosis. Please don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe my channel. Thank you. That was and take care.